Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Kampai Edu. Kampai. We are here at Trusake today, representing. Uh, we figured this was just a good place to film, and it's after hours, so why not? Um, so today we're gonna do a, another Koshu episode. We're gonna get a little bit more in depth because last time we uh, we only had a chance to do one, and there are different types of Koshu, and we really wanted to go into more depth about it because right. it is something so special and so rare, right. and something that people have a lot of questions about. Too. For sure. Yes. Yeah, last video um, we did the Kijoshu um, Hanahato. Hanahato. So first up we have the Tamagawa Time Machine Kimoto Koshu Junmai uh, 2016 BY. So uh, this little gem has been aged two years in the bottle. So it's going to have a little bit more density, but it also hasn't been aged that long. So not as dense as the Hanahato, for example, like you saw in the last video. Um, it is, uh, in terms of what what is a Kimoto? Kimoto is a traditional yeast starter method um, that dates back as early as the 12th century, which is on record. It's probably even further back than that. Yeah. Um, we'll also be touching on Kimoto slash Yamaha's in another video, yeah, too, yeah. to go in more in-depth of, of what those are. Exactly. So when you see uh, BY on the bottle, that just means brewing year. Now, brewing year is a little bit different from a calendar year. So, you know, calendar year, January to December. BY is July 1st of 2016, and this, you know, for, for this particular bottle, till June 31st of 2017. We also forgot to mention in the last video, too, is what gives sake this amber color. And basically, um, the process is called oxidation. So if you leave sake... You store sake at room temperature, almost always has to be at room temperature, maybe a little bit cooler, but not too too cool. Leave it at room temperature for at least a year, it will naturally turn this beautiful brown amber color. Now with this one, it's a little bit, what makes this one a little bit more special is that the same ibuai or the rice polishing ratio is 88%, so only 12% has been milled away. So this actually is uh, out of the press, it is naturally... This white beautiful. amber dark mm -hmm. yeah yeah so um and then also um in order to be called a koshu it has to be minimum of a year and on average average koshu is three year aging now this has only been aged two years so it's a little bit you know a little bit under the average but still obviously considered a koshu mm -hmm. so you may go to a restaurant for example and you might look at the list and might say um matured for three years something this sake has matured for three years but it's not this color it's not technically a koshu you know then you might ask what is the difference between aging and maturing and i actually i i could i couldn't figure this out for the longest time until i had to pick people's brains, brains. you know so basically when maturing takes place the intention is to add depth to the flavor of the sake body too right to add yeah more body more texture more depth and right. this is done at um, very, very low temperatures, sometimes below freezing temperatures. So the, um, the color doesn't change, it just adds more depth. Now with aging, aging has to be done at room temperature. Sometimes you can go slightly under, but it pretty much almost always is at room temperature. And the intention is to deliberately change the flavor profile of the sake. Um, this particular brewery, Tamagawa, their brewmaster is uh, a British guy. So he's the only non-Japanese toji or a brewmaster. Philip Harper. In Japan. Yeah. Shout out to Philip Harper. Harper. Yeah. Yeah, he's been with Tamagawa for almost 25 years now. So he really knows what he's doing. And he always likes to kind of push the envelope. He likes to do things a little bit out of the ordinary, you know, um, really kind of push the sake world. You know, he, he respects traditionalism, but he also likes to, you know, kind of, you know, play around a little bit as well. So I really... Uh, Really like that about him. Um, so let's go ahead and give this one a try. Yeah. So, <laughs> brought my own <laughs> bottle from home. We're not going to, you know, uh, dip into the true sake fun here. So, come by. Come by. Yeah, you. so what do, what do we get on the nose here? I'm getting uh, like bourbon soaked cherry. Mark, yeah. Maybe hints of, uh, hints of coffee, maybe a little right. peanut. It was definitely very nutty. For sure. Cashews. I get cashews. Subtle banana here and there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Uh, so uh, on the palate, I'm getting more pretty light but- sweetness. Yeah, butterscotch, caramel, mm. dark chocolate, peanut notes, and a little bit of hint of soy too. Yeah, a lot of umami, soy sauce. Right, and again, because it is polished only to twelve percent. Um, the semi blue polishing ratio that's what gives it a lot of that kind of full body, um, rich and somewhat earthy tones to this um, tamaha right here. Mm-hmm. And uh, just briefly, um, so with Junmai, there is no polishing requirement, but with Hanjozo, which is technically in the Junmai category but with added distilled alcohol, it has to be at least 70%. So with this one, it's 88%, but your typical Junmai is going to be anywhere between 70 and 60%. Right. But it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, actually, on the label, um, Chin, you want to touch a little bit yeah, on so uh, the label Philip here? Harper definitely suggests, um, it's all in Japanese, but to rec- he recommends to pair this with some ice cream, as you guys can see here as well. And we had a lot of feedback, actually, from this particular um, Tamagawa, the um, time machine, because there's a two-star Michelin um, that just got awarded, actually, this year, called Single Thread, and it got um, paired, this t- Tamagawa got paired with uh, Fua Bagra, and everyone has been, and it's located in the Bay, uh, I think up north in Napa Valley, Napa, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, people that bought the sake... Um, actually referred it back to their experience at Single Thread because of that pairing. And so it pairs well, nicely with uh, Fog Rock. So definitely try that out, guys. And ice cream. And yeah. ice cream, of course. Yeah. I've even done it with uh, a Snickers bar. Maybe even Snickers ice cream. Yeah. 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 I've done it with Reese's, yeah. too. If there's some Reese's yeah. ice cream out there, please let me know. Yeah. I want <laughs> there is, I'm pretty sure. Okay, there, there probably is. No, there You're is. right. Yeah. You're right. Cool. And just to touch again... Uh, they just kind of shouted out at me with this note here is kind of um, kind of more umami. A lot of I got natto, which is the kind of sticky fermented beans that um, a lot of people don't like because of the smell, but that's what I got. Um, not in texture though, and some uni too. Yes, uni. Got uni. Sea urchin. Yeah, yeah. That's quite a nose. So up next we have uh, kanbara. Uh, ancient treasure, Yamahai Koshu. This is also a Genshu, so it's undiluted, so a little bit higher in alcohol. Uh, Yamahai is also a traditional yeast starter method, very similar to um, Kimoto. Kimoto. Yeah, but it, it goes um, it goes back to 1909, I believe. Yeah, if Kimoto I'm, is its predecessor in a way, too. So, again, we'll touch on that in another video. Right. Um, so this is uh, aged 12 years in stainless steel casts, so a little bit lighter for it you know, being aged 12 years, that's a long time. And it, the fact that it's still so light yeah. versus the Hanahato, which you saw in the last video, aged only eight, well, not only eight years, but aged eight years in the bottle, way darker than this, obviously. Um, and this is also stored at 59 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas the time machine is stored at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, room temp. So this is just slightly chilled, slightly below room temp. Um, in stainless steel. Right. Yeah, Cast. so uh, we're not going to open it um, just because this is um, this is not our bottle. And well, we've, we've bottle. had it um, We've before. had it before, though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So mm-hmm. it's it's very light. I get a lot of honey. A lot of bourbon notes, for sure. Um, right. Green tea, uh, tart black cherry, mm-hmm. perhaps. And even little hints of like, fresh tobacco. Yeah, too. tobacco leaves, right. Again, so we um, found this quite interesting that... Um, for people that are whiskey enthusiasts, it's a very easy uh, drink to kind of trick people into thinking that it is Japanese whiskey because of how smooth it is. If you have the mindset going into um, sipping this to like as a whiskey mindset, you'll definitely see the um, the parallels of this and Japanese whiskeys of kind of that bourbon, smoky, tobacco-y um, characteristics. So um, it's not again, it's not going to be that sweet. Um, considering it being a koshu as well. Um, so, right. So $89 by the bottle. And, you know, uh, obviously it's going to be a little bit more pricey, whereas the, uh, the time machine, it's 25 by the bottle. It's the most affordable kosher we have. But it's also only aged two years. So it is, um, so this is aged 12 years. So obviously the price is going to go up because mm-hmm. they're sacrificing 
um, you know, revenue each year, they're not, right. they're, they're not, not selling. selling it. So mm-hmm. that's, that's why it's going to go up. But, um, you know, don't let the, the price steer you away because this will last, you know, three weeks to a month, um, either in the fridge or, or left at room 10. Right. And yeah, exactly. And, you know, cold shoes aren't that fragile in a sense of storing. So, you know, a lot of people have that trouble in particular of refrigerator space. Um, and cold shoes can withstand, um, you know, it being stored in, in an unchilled place. So. Right, right. Yeah. So uh, up next we have the Daruma. Daruma. Yes, this is a Daruma Masamune Koshu Vintage color. Blend. Yes. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful, especially with the light in the background. Yeah, Look that's at that. Cool, man. That is so beautiful. As Alex was saying, it, it's blended. Um, 1972, 19. 19- uh, 1979 and 1991 and 1992. So. Yeah, so they were actually uh, they're actually the first brewery to blend vintages for Koshu. So this is this actually makes it even more special. Mm-hmm. $161 by the bottle, but again, it's a blend of vintages from almost you know we're 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 going on almost 40 years for 1972. I mean that that is just incredible. Right. So just to try something really rare and special, this is just amazing. And we got to try this at Sake Day. Very mm-hmm. caramely, yeah. rich, but not too, too heavy. Not at all. Yeah, I would say the Hanahato is actually it's more, very, more heavy than mm-hmm. this. Yeah, so this is Surprisingly. definitely... Yeah, I and was, it was actually quite a hit, too, during Sake Day. Oh, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so we, we got a couple orders for this, and I um, was very... Very happy to see people purchasing something and really taking that leap of faith and and purchasing yeah. that bottle. Mm-hmm. So, this is definitely for the connoisseur um, for or sure. for you know obviously the avid avid bur- bourbon drinker for mm-hmm. sure. That's uh, Koshu in more detail. And then for our next episode, we're going to do a little special Halloween episode Ooh. with some special guests and uh, possibly some wacky, tacky costumes. <laughs> and then we're going to cover uh, Hia Aroshi, which we briefly talked about in our Nama episode. Yes. And Hia Aroshi is a Namazume. So it is single pasteurized. Usually sake is pasteurized twice. So this is pasteurized in the spring and then matured for four to six months and then released in the fall without the second pasteurization. So it is, um, it's got a lot more depth, a lot more body, definitely more of a pairing sake. I wouldn't necessarily mm-hmm. just, just be sipping this. I would definitely pair this with food. It definitely yearns for food. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thanksgiving's coming up. All this day. is perfect for Thanksgiving yeah. dinner. Mashed potatoes and gravy, turkey, stuffing, yeah. turkey, pumpkin pie. Cranberries and, right. Oh, yeah. It works. Man, you're making me yeah. hungry. <laughs> and, you know, it's a nice color, too, um, for the label. And actually, this bottle... As maybe you guys can recognize this, it was avail- It was seen in our second episode um, when we were talking about Namas, and so we're gonna go ahead and revisit this, a blast from the past. Um, yeah, so be on the lookout for that. All right, so you guys have a great night, and we'll see you in the next video. Come by, come by. <laughs>